If you're a Kiwi, you're probably tired of hearing about sheep, Lord of the Rings, and people asking you where your country is. You're probably also tired of people hearing your accent and asking, where are you from, Australia? While the English spoken in New Zealand does share a lot of features with Australian English, it's a distinct variety of English that has its own unique features as well. Between 1788 and 1841, New Zealand was loosely part of the colony of New South Wales, which later became part of Australia. The earliest European settlers in New Zealand were traders and whalers from New South Wales who set up trading stations. They were followed by missionaries from England beginning in 1814. The colony of New Zealand was declared as a separate entity in 1841, and Britain began to carry out a process of planned settlement. Most migrants came from England, Wales, Scotland and Ireland, but many did not come directly. A significant number arrived from Australia, so some of them likely brought their children who had been born in Australia. This could have had an effect on the way other children in the colony spoke and influenced the emerging New Zealand accent. According to the census of 1871, the vast majority of migrants were from Britain and Ireland, but an inordinate number were Scottish or Irish, 27.3% and 22% respectively. These particular percentages could have also had an influence on the emerging accent. New Zealand English resembles Australian English more than any other variety, which may be a result of that early Australian settlement, a somewhat similar mix of migrant accents, and continuous contact between New Zealand and Australia ever since those days. The Kiwi accent. Not all Kiwi accents are the same. There are basically two accents, a cultivated accent, which more closely resembles British received pronunciation, and a broad accent, which includes more distinctly Kiwi features but a spectrum of accents exists in between the two, with those somewhere in the middle range being considered general New Zealand English. As is typical in England and Australia, accents of New Zealand are generally non-rhotic, meaning that R is not pronounced at the end of a syllable, but is rendered as a vowel. For example, I say beer, but Kiwis say beer. The main thing that distinguishes the English of New Zealand from Australian English and other varieties is its vowels, some of them shifted during the 20th century, and these changes are more pronounced in broad accents. Most strikingly, the original short front vowels shifted. A became E, E became E, E became E. These changes lead to some interesting contrasts. Listen to these examples in my accent and a New Zealand accent. Chat. Chat. Mess. Miss. Sit. Sit. The shift in Kiwi vowels was a chain shift, meaning the first vowel began to sound like the second one, and the second one began to sound like the third one. This might result in a misunderstanding if you aren't aware of the shift. Sax. Sex. Sex. Six. 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 Please be mindful of this when a Kiwi is talking about Christmas sax or playing the sax. I find that when listening to Kiwis with a particularly broad accent, I have to sort of translate the vowels in my head to make sure that I'm understanding the right word. Aussies love to make fun of the third vowel shift, accusing Kiwis of saying fush and chups. In Aussie English, that same vowel has actually shifted slightly in the opposite direction, so Kiwis love to accuse Aussies of saying fish and cheeps. Of course, both pronunciations are exaggerated. Before I mentioned the shift from a to e, but it's worth pointing out that Kiwi English underwent the trap-bath split, like British and Australian English, but unlike North American English. The trap-bath split means that the early modern English vowel a became long a in received pronunciation and long a in New Zealand pronunciation before these specific consonants. Before other consonants, it's a in received pronunciation and e in New Zealand. So if you're a speaker of North American English, some of the words that you pronounce with an a will have e in Kiwi English, but others will have a. Another more recent shift in Kiwi vowels is that the vowels in near and square are pronounced the same by some speakers. Near. Near. Square. Square. It's not fair. It's not fair. Another thing you might hear in Kiwi English is that past participles like grown and known are sometimes pronounced as growin and knowin with a vowel inserted that probably developed by analogy with other past participles like written or spoken, which have a vowel in that position. This pronunciation is used by around 50% of New Zealanders. While there are different Kiwi accents based on social and economic factors, for the most part there aren't regional variations. 
An exception is the regional accent of Southland and part of neighbouring Otago, where more than half of the original settlers were from Scotland. One characteristic of this accent is the alveolar trill, or rolling R sound, which occurs after vowels, these days in particular after words with the vowel in nurse. This is a feature that once faded and became less common, but then rebounded and started to become more common again. There's also a slightly different accent that is specific to some Kiwis of Maori background. It's particularly broad in its vowels, it's sometimes rhotic, like the Southland accent, the T sound is sometimes unaspirated, and voiced Z is often devoiced to S at the end of words. Something that appears in Kiwi English in general, but more often in Maori English, is the high-rising terminal, something I talked about in my video on Australian English as well. High-rising terminal occurs when the speaker ends a statement with rising intonation like a yes or no question. For example, During the holidays I like to get out of town, go to the mountains, do some tramping, or go to the batch with my mates, that sort of thing. This is done to sort of touch base with the listener while you're speaking, to check that they're following what you're saying. Another thing, which was originally known as a feature of Maori speech, but is now used by New Zealanders in general, is using a at the end of a sentence to signal that they want to check if the statement is correct or to elicit a response. For example, It's hot today, eh? It's similar to the way Canadians say a, but Canadians these days don't say a as often as they used to. Kiwis now take the crown. Okay, we're sort of moving beyond the realm of accent now, so let's move on to Kiwi vocabulary and expressions. A lot of the casual words and expressions used in New Zealand are also used in Australia, and in some cases in the UK or Ireland where they originated. Heaps. This means a lot. It's also used in Australia and the UK. Of course, this word exists in North American English as well, meaning piles, but it's not often used with the meaning of a lot. There were heaps of people at the beach. Gutted. This means disappointed. This is also used in the UK and Australia. The shops out of Marmite? Yeah bro, I'm gutted. Sweet as. This is another expression meaning great or awesome. This phrase is an abbreviation of a comparative phrase, like sweet as hell or something like that. This is very common in New Zealand and Australia, and can be used with lots of different adjectives. It's hot as. Naked. Bugged. These words mean tired or exhausted. This is originally slang from the UK that's now used both in New Zealand and Australia. I'm pretty naked. It's worth noting that bugger is similar to the F word, though not quite as taboo. It can also be used in some other contexts where you might hear the F word too. For example, bugger all. Like its F word equivalent, it means nothing or none. What did you do over the holidays? Bugger all. Chocker. Chocker block. This means full. Do you want anything else to eat? Nah, I'm chocker. Togs. This means swimsuit. This is used in New Zealand, Australia, and Ireland. It's probably a result of Irish influence on Kiwi and Australian English. A cracker of a day. This means a beautiful day or a great day. The pattern of a cracker of a something can be used with nouns in general to say that something's great. It's a cracker of a song. Looks a bit sus. This means that someone or something looks a bit suspicious. Sus is used in other varieties of English too, but in different expressions and contexts. Mate. Like in Australia, this word means friend, but can also be confrontational depending on the context. Bro. This word too can be either friendly or confrontational. I've been told that mate is used more by non-Maori, while bro is used more by Maori. In fact, Maori English is sometimes referred to as bro English. So there's a lot of crossover between Kiwi and Australian English, but other words and expressions are uniquely Kiwi. Choice. This means great or awesome. The wops. The wop wops. This means the middle of nowhere. Chili bin. This means a portable cooler. Jandals. This means rubber sandals. Apparently this is a contraction of the phrase Japanese sandals. Batch. This word refers to a holiday home, and is used in most of New Zealand, on the North Island and the north half of the South Island. Crib. This is the word for a holiday home that's used on the southern half of the South Island. If your batch is out in the WAPS, you might do some Tramping. Which means hiking. And while you're tramping, you might run into a Captain Cooker. Which is a wild boar. This comes from the name of Captain Cook. He was the first person who released pigs into the wild in New Zealand. A different type of wild pig you might encounter is kunekune. Kune is a Maori word meaning plump. 
And if it's cold outside, I hope you bring a swan dry, which refers to a heavy woolen shirt. This is actually the name of a New Zealand-based company that makes that kind of shirt, but the brand name has become a ubiquitous word for this type of product. And while you're on holiday, I hope you feel a box of birds, which means be in a good mood. I hear this is sometimes used in Australia as well, but much less often. When you're not feeling a box of birds, be careful not to peck a sad, which means be upset or throw a tantrum. That kid is pecking a sad. Yeah, he's a howly bag. Howly bag. This means whiner or crybaby. A crack up. This means something or someone funny. That guy's a crack up. In my variety of English, we use crack up, but as a verb, not a noun. Good as gold. This means doing very well. So how's life? Good as gold. Pakarud. This word means broken. It comes from the Maori word pakaru. Loan words from Maori are definitely one of the most notable elements of the English of New Zealand. Some Maori words are optionally used instead of an English equivalent. For example, Maori greetings are quite widely used, like kiora, which means hello or thank you, but literally be healthy. Waka. This is the Maori word for canoe. Kiwi. This word comes from Maori and refers to the kiwi bird, but you probably also know it as the name of a fruit and the nickname for New Zealanders. Pakeha. This word refers to New Zealanders of European descent, but can also be extended to non-Maori New Zealanders in general. It's not only Maoris who use this word, by the way. Taonga. This means treasure. Mana. This means a person or organization of great prestige. It comes from the Maori word mana, meaning prestige, authority, or its source, spiritual power. Hui. This means meeting. We're holding a hui tomorrow morning. In some cases, words or phrases combine both English and Maori. Half pie. This means substandard or unfinished. Pie is the Maori word for good. Couch kumara. This means couch potato. Kumara means sweet potato in Maori. By the way, if you're interested in a closer look at the Maori language, check out my previous video on Maori right here. Just like Aussies, Kiwis make frequent use of hypocharistics, in other words, diminutive forms that show affinity for someone or something. These usually consist of one syllable from the base word followed by a vowel suffix, like e or o. Some are the same as in Australia, while others are specific to New Zealand. A forklift driver. Forky. Good. Goodo. Smoko. This means break time or a short break. I guess it originally meant a smoke break. Registration becomes Rego. Compensation Compos. Names are often treated this way too. Debra becomes Dibs. Sharon becomes Sheza. Sometimes rhotic sounds turn into Z sounds. It happens with place names too. Queensland Queenie Auckland Orks Taranaki The Neki People often make up new ones on the spot, just to play with words, lighten a conversation, or whatever. As you can see, the English of New Zealand is a special and unique variety of English, in particular because of its characteristic pronunciation. We also saw a lot of similarities with Australian English, but even in those cases when casual words and expressions were the same, the New Zealand accent was fairly distinct. I guess that's a result of living so far from most other places that people can't find you on the map. The question of the day. For Kiwis, are there any other features of your variety of English that you want us to know about? And to other people, what's your favorite Kiwi word or expression that you heard in this video? Write your answers in the comments down below. As always, I would like to give a special thanks to the Langfocus Patreon supporters, especially the ones right here on the screen who are the top tier Patreon supporters. Patreon supporters help keep this channel going month after month, and there are also some special bonus benefits of becoming a patron. To see what it's all about, check out patreon.com slash langfocus. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.